They had some good numbers at Disney, for sure. Very good numbers, but it was the dominance at the box office that propped those numbers up. So what does that mean moving ahead? Well, the, the movie industry and the theatrical movie industry is not going to last more than five or ten years as, as a viable business. But where Disney uh, has positioned itself, it's going to be the dominant content pr producer, distributor, uh, over the top in streaming going forward. And the market has finally caught up to Bob Iger and realized that Disney owns that space. Yeah, so Porter, we could talk all about the earnings call and, and the earnings numbers, but frankly, here in San Francisco, no one cares. We just want to know about that Disney Plus TV. Right. What early numbers do you need to see to feel confident they can take on Netflix? Well, they're going to lose money for at least four years, may, maybe a little longer. Uh, they're talking about rich by 2024. Uh, Bob Iger has said we'll have 50 million uh, paid subscribers. The, the very smart thing that he did right away was price it uh, at an irresistible level. And if you're a parent and you don't subscribe to Disney Plus, I think your kids will probably leave home. Uh, it's got so much uh, recognizable and, and irresistible content. No one can touch the, the huge amount of uh, library material that Bob Iker is making available for $12.99 a month. A bargain. So it's a real bargain, and he's thrown in ESPN and he's thrown in Hulu. So uh, for that amount, how can you go wrong? You can't. But so what kind of revenue? What kind of what kind of profit? And, and positioning can this earn for Disney? It, it, it will become the biggest profit spinner four or five years from now. But right now, it's it's, it's going to lose money as it, it it lost almost a billion dollars last year just in the startups. And each year until it breaks even, it's going to lose several billion dollars. But that's that that's development cost, and that that's actually money well spent. Porter, we are hearing on the earnings call from CEO Bob Iger, and he's coming out and saying that there is no floor in sight for cable subscriptions. How much of a headwind from cable <laughs> subscriptions can be offset, frankly, from a rise in streaming? Well, it isn't the cable subscribers that are the concern. It's the retransmission fees that are worth billions of dollars to Disney and the other content providers. Uh, just just on ABC alone, um, he, he's going to start to lose literally billions of dollars uh, from from retransmission because of the serious cable cord, cut, cord cutting that's been ongoing and is only going to accelerate. So you're still very positive on the stock. Is this a stock you own? Is this a stock would you buy? And you're also uh, you're, you're positive we, on online in, we've, betting. We've been in and out of, of Disney, and, and I think that what's happened is that Disney has uh, has gone from a, a day trader's stock and a market-influenced, rumor-driven stock to being a value stock. And that's where the market is going to find a, a huge appreciation in investing in Disney over the long haul. We, and as you said, it never hurts to have your brand, your local <laughs> Mickey Mouse that. others known by so many children of all ages around the world. Here, here's here's a, a, a little number that you, you ought to keep in mind. Disney has a PE today of 17 times. Uh, the only other media company that's uh, of any comparable size and, and content quality is Comcast. They're also at 17 times. Netflix has a 92 PE and that suggests that since they they have announced that they're going to spend $15 billion this year and more next year. Uh, they're not going to make a profit, and at 92 times, somebody is going to pick them up.